Good morning YouTubers, it's uh, Monday morning, it's uh, 10.30 here in uh, Spain, that's 9.30 UK time, AM. My wife is still in bed, she's having a sleep in. I'm up early, I've had my breakfast, I've been in the shower, I've drinking my tea. I can't go on the flight simulator just yet because I'll wake my wife. It's, we've moved the simulator into the bedroom. Because <laughs> she was sick of it on the dining room table. Uh, and quite rightly too. So, the big news over the weekend is um, the crash, the Spitfire crash. There's been loads of reports coming out, all um, copying each other and I'm not getting to the bottom of anything really. Uh, until this morning I've read in the Daily Mail, was, they did quite a, a decent article on it including some eyewitness reports. Now it turns out there was lots of reports it was a replica Spitfire but it's unlikely because it was owned by the Royal Air Force. They have a thing called the uh, Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. They operate about six Spitfires. There's a hurricane, a couple of hurricanes, I think, a couple of chipmunks, um, a DC-3, and a Lancaster. So it's unlikely that these are replicas. I, I would say they're the real thing, and they're flown by Royal Air Force pilots. And unfortunately, the pilot was killed, and he was a very experienced uh, pilot as well. He was a Typhoon jet fighter pilot. So, and he was an instructor, according to Tim Davies. He used to instruct uh, on uh, student pilots when they're doing training on jet fighters. So the guy obviously knew his stuff and he was flying Spitfires with the Battle of Britain Memorial flight since 2021. So he should have quite a lot of hours on Spitfires. So it's a big tragedy all around. I mean, uh, what happened? I mean, what happened? I don't know, I wasn't there. I, I, I can't speculate. I, I can come up with ideas and theories as to what may have happened, but we won't know until the, the investigation is finished. It is a military aircraft. It was flown by military personnel, so it will be a military investigation. It won't go through the uh, Civilian Aviation Authority. They have the Air Accidents Investigation Branch and uh, there are a lot of Spitfires in private hands, you know, rich people are doing up Spitfires there all the time because they're worth a lot of money. And um, <coughs> a civilian Spitfire would go through the air accidents investigation of the Civilian Aviation Authority, whereas this one won't. This is a military aircraft, it's owned by the Ministry of Defence and it was flown from a Ministry of Defence establishment by a serving Royal Air Force pilot. So. It's completely down to the Ministry of Defence and the, uh, their investigation team will no doubt do a thorough um, crash investigation and get down to the theory of it. But the eyewitnesses did say, according to the Daily Mail, there was a guy who was there with his children watching and they saw the aircraft take off. The aircraft went off in the direction of wherever it was going and then it turned back. Obviously the guy had a problem. Um, I, I, I would imagine, I would imagine it would be a power problem on the air, on the, on the end. I don't know. This is, I'm just, this is just me assuming. I might be completely wrong, but if, if he had a problem and he thought, I'm going to abort this flight, I'm taking the aircraft back, something's not right, whatever that was, um, then he would have turned the aircraft around. And the next thing the eyewitness said, the aircraft was swaying about. Swaying about? Well, it would be going in a straight line, it wouldn't be swaying about. So why would it be swaying about? Again, if it was close to the stall, it would be swaying about. Um, because he had, you know, possibly had a power problem and you don't steer it with the uh, ailerons when you're at low speed. I mean, Spitfire can handle quite well at low speed, you know, realistically. I think those things come into land at about 100 miles an hour, maybe a little bit less, maybe 90. 
I'd have to get the simulator out. I've got quite a few um, Spitfires in my hangar there somewhere. Um, but yes, yeah, close to the stall, it would be sweaty. See, if you have an engine failure, you've got no power. You've got to glide that aircraft to where you're going to land it. And if you go too slow in the glide, it will stall and you'll drop a wing and it'll dive into the ground. And that's actually what happened according to the eyewitnesses. Now, I'm not saying that that's what happened, but it fits those likelihoods that it probably had an engine failure and didn't have enough airspeed to get back. I mean, I, I, I don't know because I wasn't there. I didn't see it. So I mean, it would be wrong to speculate as to exactly what happened. Although we're all scratching our heads thinking what on earth could have gone wrong? You know, it's only natural that people will think what went wrong, what happened. I know for a fact that I have managed to glide a Mark I Spitfire. I've never flown a Spitfire, by the way, a real one. No, only in VR. And I've got one of the cheapest VR headsets on the market, okay. But there are some people out there who have got really, really expensive setups. They've got very expensive computers, expensive headsets, the lot, the works. And the, the models, the flight models are as near as they can make them to fly and handle as like the real thing. And I had a engine failure in a Mark I Spitfire going to Wick and I managed to glide it all the way to Wick and get it in okay, so long as you keep the speed up. So you don't put any flaps down, anything like that. You just glide it. And when you get to the last minute, you know, you put the wheels down. You don't put the wheels down until you... And if the wheels don't come down, you just belly it on. But they don't do that in, um, in flying training these days when we're talking about fast jets and things like that. A typhoon, the guy was a typhoon pilot. You know, the engines, if two engines failed on the typhoon, you wouldn't look for a field and try and land it in a field, you'd eject. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what would happen. You would not try to... I mean, if there was a big runway close to hand and you could get it onto the runway, then yes, you'd have a go, I suppose. But other than that, you know, it's just, it's just ridiculous to think you're going to try and get that down in a field without killing yourself. It's not going to happen, you know. Um, but back in the day, in the days of Spitfires and... Um, tail wheels and even today you know went with smaller propeller driven aeroplanes pilots are trained to put them down in fields because you've got no other chance you don't have an ejection seat in a, in a Cessna 172 or don't, people don't even carry pilot uh, parachutes I mean uh, there's no reason to jump out of it if it's still flying if it's gliding you know Cessna 172 you'd trim to the glide at 70 knots with all the flaps up and you can go a long way at 70 knots depending on how much height you've got. This is why I say the higher you are, the safer you are, because you've got more time to sort things out. At low level, you've got no time to sort anything out, and you're in. So that's why flying low is far more dangerous than flying high. Believe it or not, the higher you are, the safer you are. Uh, So I don't know, but the, the Royal Air Force do maintain their aircraft to a very high standard. So the fact that something went wrong with it, I mean, I can't see anything being wrong with the controls of the aircraft. Um, the only thing that comes to mind is some sort of power loss. And we won't know until the findings of the uh, accident investigation, but I am today, I'm going to start flying the, uh, the Spitfire around and uh, Trying some glide landings, you know, I, I tried it with the hurricane, the hurricane comes down like a brick, it really does, you know, you wouldn't... It's, it's not a good glider. The Spitfire glides a lot better because the wings are different on the Spitfire. I mean, the hurricane's a great aeroplane, it's got a nice wide undercarriage and uh, it was the backbone of the... Of the uh, Royal Air Force in the Battle of Britain. It probably shot down more aeroplanes than the Spitfire, but the Spitfire was nicer and faster and it won the uh, the fame for winning the Battle of Britain. Of course it did. I'm not taking anything away from the Spitfire, but it uh, tailwheel technology, isn't it? 
Uh, these things are designed to take off on grass into wind and land into wind on grass. And uh, the design of the undercarriage wasn't actually that good. I've seen quite a few uh, Spitfire crashes uh, in landing and takeoff accidents, and the Messerschmitt 109 was worse. That lost the, they lost more pilots to crashes on the ground than they ever did in the air in combat. And the Messerschmitt 109 was the highest scoring fighter aircraft of all time, mainly because they took on the entire world and they had loads of them. So, I mean, that was a contributing factor. But uh, no, they're hot tailwheel aircraft. If you said to me what's the most difficult aeroplane in the world or the most dodgy and dangerous to fly, I would say uh, Messerschmitt 109 would come first and uh, the Spitfire would be a very close second because of the very narrow undercarriage that they had on them. Um, when they asked the United States to build them a fighter with longer range and uh, they said straight away we want a wide undercarriage, we don't want any of that narrow undercarriage nonsense. And they came up with the P-51, as you know, P-51 was a great aircraft. Packard Merlin engine, pretty much the same thing as the Spitfire, but better. And uh, what a tremendous aeroplane that was. It was everything the Spitfire was not, but that's not to take anything away from the Spitfire. The Spitfire has earned its place in, uh, in history, but it is, it is a dodgy aeroplane to fly. Every pilot wants to fly one, but they are dodgy, especially in crosswinds. You know, if you get a, a nice field into wind, you shouldn't have a problem. But to be flying around in a Spitfire and then the engine conks out on you and you're only at 150 feet, you know, and you've got nowhere to go, you're too low to bail out, you can't. They don't have ejection seats in Spitfires. You literally have to climb out the cockpit and jump. And 150 foot is not high enough. For the parachute to open, so it's very sad. It is very sad indeed. Thanks for watching.